The Siege of Jerusalem stands as one of the most impressive sieges of all antiquity. Fought over five months, the bloody conflict saw hundreds of thousands of Roman and Jewish forces battle for every inch of the city. The sheer scale of the operations are truly impressive. Yet we shouldn't let these titanic moves by the armies obscure the many stunning feats performed by individuals. Today, we'll be descending to the ground level of the fighting to witness the heroes of the Siege of Jerusalem. A quick thanks is owed to our sponsor, Squarespace, for making this video possible. Our first hero will be the Roman general, Titus. He, along with his father Vespasian, had been appointed by Nero to suppress the Great Jewish Revolt in 67 AD. Over several months, they waged a brutal campaign to eradicate rebel strongholds and punish the population. In these efforts, Vespasian played the role of the traditional Roman commander who led the legions from behind the front lines. His 27-year-old son, on the other hand, emulated the traditions of old and often took an active role in the fighting. He proved particularly adept on horseback, leading cavalry units to break up enemy sorties, to punch through gaps in Jewish formations, and to chase down fleeing rebels. Yet his activity was not limited to combat from atop the relative safety of a horse. Titus frequently undertook risky operations such as at Jodapada when he and a handful of soldiers crept up over the fortifications at night, eliminated the sentries, and opened the gates which precipitated the downfall of the city. In this way, the young Titus distinguished himself as both a capable leader and warrior. Both of these talents would be put on full display in 70 AD when Vespasian returned to Rome, leaving the 29-year-old Titus with the monumental task of taking the heavily fortified city of Jerusalem. Not only would the young commander succeed on a strategic level, but he would also personally save the legions on numerous occasions. The first of these heroics occurred in the early days of the siege. The 10th Fratensis Legion was fortifying its camp along the Mount of Olives when the Jews sallied out unexpectedly from the city. Their assault crushed the unprepared troops and sent them into a panicked flight. Without hesitation, Titus mounted up and launched a counterattack with his personal bodyguard. This stalled the enemy's advance and rallied the men. However, another Jewish assault once again caused the Roman lines to buckle, leaving Titus and his companions to face the entire enemy force alone. His staff begged the general to fall back. Titus, however, was not one to back down and fought on. This feat of great bravery rallied the Romans once more and allowed them to finally repel the Jewish forces. Were it not for these heroics, the siege of Jerusalem may very well have spiraled into defeat with the crippling loss of one of its four legions. This would not be the only time that Titus would save his men. While siege operations were being conducted against the first wall, additional Jewish sallies caught the Romans by surprise. But when their lines faltered, Titus was there to lead in the cavalry to the rescue, and on this occasion is recorded as slaying a dozen attackers himself. Later, when the legions punched through the second wall only to be ambushed from all sides, Titus was there to stage a rearguard action to cover the retreat and killed another dozen men with his bow. Further on in the siege, when Jewish forces launched a night assault against Roman siege works that pushed the legions back into their camp, the general delivered a strike with his cavalry to drive them off. And finally, when the siege climaxed with the Battle of the Temple Mount, Titus supervised the assault from the Antonia, directing his bodyguard cavalry against the Jewish lines. These repeated actions would earn him the title of hero among the officer corps as well as the rank and file troops. But Titus was not one to monopolize the limelight, and made sure to encourage and reward the great deeds of others. Let's now turn to the stories of those who earned the respect of Titus. One of the ways troops would seek to distinguish themselves before their commander was to take trophies. These might be weapons or even body parts from defeated enemies. On one occasion, however, a particularly strong auxiliary cavalryman named Pedanius would claim an even greater prize. When a large Jewish sally was driven back, the soldier chased after the retreating enemy, reaching down from his saddle and grabbing a man by the ankle. He then proceeded to drag his armored captive all the way to Titus, dropping him off proudly at the general's feet. Such a feat earned him great reward, and many others throughout the siege would attempt to emulate him. 
Other Roman soldiers would even seek to gain notoriety by challenging the enemy to duels, such as when the opposing armies faced off amid the porticos of the Temple Mount. In this case, a valiant Jewish champion named Jonathan climbed atop the ruins and dared anyone to meet him in single combat. A Roman horseman dismounted and accepted the challenge. Before both armies, the men approached each other for a duel. However, the Roman slipped when his shoes lost purchase on the stone and he was quickly cut down. Jonathan yelled triumphantly, demeaning his enemies and urging on his allies. In response, a Roman centurion named Priscus stepped forwards. He drew his bow and promptly shot down the haughty hero. This incident goes to show the dangers of seeking excessive personal glory. In fact, it was something which the Romans had long seen as a danger to proper discipline and was something against which Titus took some measures to curb in his ranks. Yet this did not stop Roman heroics entirely. During the action against the Antonia Fortress, for instance, when the walls suddenly collapsed in the middle of the night, Titus asked for volunteers to storm the breach at first light. The mission was seen as a suicide job and only a dozen brave men stepped forward. Led by a wiry, dark-skinned Syrian auxiliary named Sabinus, the handful of men launched an assault so audacious that the defenders were actually caught by surprise. Missile fire cut several men down on the approach, but the remaining Romans managed to climb up the makeshift Jewish barricade and scatter the forces there. However, enemy forces soon rallied and launched a counterattack. Arrows and stones rained down on the small group atop the walls. Sabinus and several others huddled behind their shields, but were battered to death. The remaining wounded survivors limped back pitifully to their lines. This demoralizing blow led the Roman commanders to call off their follow-up attacks and pull back to rethink their strategy. However, not all would heed these orders. Two days later, in the early hours of the morning, a band of soldiers on patrol hatched their own plans. These 20 legionaries, accompanied by a pair of cavalry troopers, a trumpeter, and a standard bearer of the 5th Macedonica Legion, crept up into the ruins of the Antonia. They slit the throats of several sentries and made it all the way up to the enemy battle lines undetected. The bannerman planted his flag and the trumpeter now sounded out the signal of attack. The awakened Jewish forces in the vicinity fled in a panic as the sounds echoed throughout the Antonia. The Romans were equally surprised by the sudden turn of events and Titus ordered the immediate deployment of picked men to secure the fortress. But by now, the Jewish forces realized they had been deceived and also swarmed forwards. What resulted was a desperate and confused fight in the dark passages of the Antonia. The battle would rage fiercely for nearly 10 hours until at last, Jewish fury prevailed over Roman skill. Repulsed once more, Titus sought other means to take the Temple Mount. There would be several more attacks on the fortified position in the weeks ahead. One of the more determined assaults saw an all-out storming of the walls. Brave legionaries ran forwards with ladders in hand and attempted to ascend the parapets as massed artillery and archers provided covering fire. Yet the defenders held fast, pushing over ladders and cutting down any Roman who made it to the top. In response, heroic standard bearers brought up the eagles and climbed the walls themselves to motivate the men. These valiant efforts brought the assault to a new height of intensity. But one by one, the Roman heroes atop the battlements were slain and the eagles captured. The bloody assault was called off. Eventually, the legions managed to force their way through the remains of the Antonia and out onto the courtyard of the Temple Mount. Here several battles were fought between both sides. The fourth battle of the temple saw Romans finally set fire to the inner temple and overwhelm the Jewish defenses. This would prove to be the climax of the siege, with the city falling entirely within a month. In the ruins of Jerusalem, Titus would conduct his celebrations and reward the heroics of his soldiers with promotions, medals, and payment, let alone the decorations they'd receive during his future triumph. But we would be remiss to focus uniquely on the achievements of the Romans. After all, the Jewish defenders would match if not exceed them in bravery on many occasions. Let's now take a look at some of their stories. Generally speaking, the Jewish forces put up an impressive, spirited defense of Jerusalem. 
On many occasions, they did not simply sit back atop their defenses, but sallied out to meet the Romans face to face. Early on in the siege, they almost managed to take out Titus with his scouting party, and soon after, nearly defeated the 10th legion atop the Mount of Olives. But when the Romans brought up their siege engines, more heroes would emerge to repel them. For instance, when the rams were brought up against the first wall, three men volunteered themselves for the cause. Josephus identifies them as a Galilean named Tephtheus, a former bodyguard named Megasarus, and a half-crippled man named Chiagiras. According to records of the event, quote, They neither hesitated nor shrank back, but charged through the center of the foe and set the engines on fire. Pelted with missiles and thrust at with swords on every side, they refused to withdraw from their perilous position until the engines were ablaze. In the whole course of the war, the city produced no more heroic than these three, or more terrifying. The lengths that the defenders went to combat the siege works continued to astound the Romans. When ramps were brought up against the Antonia fortress, for instance, Jewish sappers dug a massive countermine under the battlefield. Working night and day, they labored in perilous conditions to advance slowly by torchlight under the earth. Just when the Roman troops rolled up with their rams and siege towers, the trap was sprung. Combustible material was set alight deep within the tunnel, burning away the pit props with them. With a tremendous crash of earth and billowing smoke, the Roman engineering works were completely destroyed. Many more instances would see the Jews put fear into the hearts of the Romans. But as the siege dragged on, they would be forced to engage in increasingly asymmetrical warfare. This would involve deploying every trick in the book to ensnare their enemies in traps. One instance involved a group of Jews posing as defectors. The plot began as these individuals left from one of the city gates while being pelted by shouts and stones from above. Their nearby Roman patrols moved up to investigate. The decoys pretended to surrender while the legionaries were led up to the gates with promises of betraying the city to them. However, at a predetermined signal, Jews atop the walls unleashed a hail of arrows on them and the group that had supposedly surrendered drew hidden blades for the attack. In this way, they destroyed a unit caught entirely by surprise. In another instance, the legions had managed to punch a hole through the perimeter of the second wall. As they moved into the breach expecting heavy resistance, the legions were met with only eerie silence. Advancing through the narrow streets, all was deserted. Yet when they had been sufficiently drawn in, all hell broke loose and the Jews emerged from hidden locations to attack from all directions. With missile barrages and rapid guerrilla strikes, the Roman assault force was shredded to pieces. Survivors barely managed to make their escape with the arrival of Titus and the covering fire of auxiliary archers. The indomitable spirit of the defenders would continue every day of the siege right up until the fateful sacking of the Temple Mount. Even here, amidst the death and flames, Jewish heroes would fight to the last. I remain truly impressed by the events of the Siege of Jerusalem and hope that this focus on the heroes of the battle has given you a better appreciation for the human side of this titanic struggle. Stay tuned for future episodes where we will cover more epic moments in history. I wanted to thank Squarespace for making this video possible. Their awesome platform makes it super easy to build and customize your own website and they've got a number of great features for your online needs. For instance, Audioblock allows you to embed audio on your site and tag it for iTunes within a blog. This is great for setting up your own podcast. Additionally, as a content creator, you'll be thrilled to hear about their sync feature, which allows you to link up all of your social media accounts to the website and post simultaneously across them. There's a ton more to be excited about. You can start your own free trial today and enjoy 10% off your first purchase by going to squarespace.com invicta. And finally, a huge thanks is owed to our supporters on Patreon and the many talented researchers, writers, and artists who made this video possible. Please consider contributing to fund future content. If you found this topic interesting, check out these related videos about our fascinating past. Be sure to like and subscribe for more history, and check out our description for ways to support the channel. Thanks for watching.